my bed. Because after about that storm, probably. Big old slot fish. Yep, a big old slot fish. Gonk. Isn't that sad that that's not a keeper? Yeah. Look at the belly on that fish. Welcome to Lake Fork. Big old pretty slot fish. So what we're doing, I know it's going to be hard to hear, but we're just fishing the mouths of these little pockets. There's spawners in them and that one there's a stump out there under the water and uh, no one knows better ones want to be a little deeper. I just pitch that Cinco out. I'm Cinco and she got it. Now that one fish what I do anytime I'm now tournament nest fishing for a five fish stringer is different. You better know where your fish are before you go out there. And if you're seeking, what you'll see most good nest fishermen do is they're not fishing. They're on 60, 70, 80, 90% of the trolling motor just covering water, looking for four plus pound fish. Well, in this case, we're looking for any size fish and there's so many people, you really just can't run the banks. So when I'm looking, I had a fish that was up on the nest that spooked off. So I just turned, I mean, there's no sense in standing there with a the bait knot in the water. And I just threw that Cinco down the middle of that drain. There were three or four stumps and I was throwing it at each one of those stumps because I knew there could either be a fish deeper spawning out there or a fish set up out there waiting for the water to warm to come up to spawn. And I caught this really nice fish doing that. So we fished on through there and, and we had caught a bunch of slot fish. We had, uh, excuse me, a bunch of unders and slots. And I had three and I didn't stop to see which one was the heaviest because I knew I could have three in my possession. And Ray, Grady and I talked about it. And we, we could have gone in and lost an hour-ish of fishing time to try to win a small prize, not knowing we could actually want a pretty good prize with one of the fish in there. But I didn't even weigh any of them because I knew that I had three. And until I caught something that I knew was significantly bigger, there was no sense in spending the time trying to weigh those fish or cull through those fish. And you can only weigh one fish per hour anyway. So I just left them in there. And uh, we, we kind of had run out of places to run back there because there were so many boats in there. But my experience tells me that when those, so those fish were real green, they were just moving up. And when that's the case, they really like being on the last dock or two or the first dock or two coming into those pockets. So you'll see I spin around right here and we're, we're running out of time. I don't even, I, so I had rigged to flip that, that uh, gator grass, I had rigged a three quarter ounce tungsten sinker with a six cents prong on 50 pound cigar braid. And uh, I didn't even unspool it because I, my experience is on those flipping fish on docks, they'll bite something moving real fast just like a grass fish does. When it falls by them, it doesn't give them a chance to, to think about it. They just react to it. And I caught this one right here. Twenty 
And then I had a camera go off and I think I caught another fish or two that I just showed to the camera because that back camera or the front camera wasn't working. I had, I, I've had some camera issues as I seem to have every time I go out these days. Yep. Pop out. Uh, and then right at the end of the day, actually right here, I don't think he weighs as much as the other one does, so. Chilling in that brush pile, weren't you? Chilling in the brush pile. Here, right at the end of the day, uh, we were all the way out, and like I said, I caught fish on those first docks going into pockets, and then on this last dock going out of a pocket, there was three little brush piles I could see, and you'll see I flipped it in the furthest one, and I hopped it through it, and I hopped it through it, and we got to that last one, thunk at fish bit it and actually it didn't thunk and just when I went to pick it up it was heavy and I caught this last fish and I think this is probably the biggest fish we actually culled one of those three out of there and uh, we decided it was uh, right at two when this happened maybe five till two and I told Grady I said I think if we leave it two we'll have time to get up there and weigh one of our fish so caught that fish swapped one out of the live well uh, ran and just kind of eyeballed them. Didn't take the time to mess with the scales. Ran back up to the weigh-in and uh, pulled up. Grady grabbed a, grabbed the scale as we were idling in, and he figured them out. He said that's the biggest one. And they were announcing when we pulled up that like a 193 was the smallest fish. And I knew that fish was over two pounds. I didn't know how big over over two pounds it was, but it wound up weighing 240. And I got bumped. I think I finished. 12th or 13th or 14th in that hour. I just missed getting a check. Sadly, in the hour that, uh, excuse me for a second, uh, Tanner, Tanner Spurgeon caught the 1547, that 240 would have finished second place. Uh, he ran everybody out of there. Nobody wanted to weigh that hour. And uh, we actually didn't even know that, that hour. We didn't go in, obviously. But that could have been a $950 fish had we gone in on that hour. And by the way, I have talked to Tanner. Uh, another friend of mine, Tyler Holmes, netted that fish for Tanner. So Tanner and I are going to get together this week, and we're going to give you all the full story on that catch. Uh, and it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, it really is. Uh, so we're going to get together, and I'll get a video up for you guys on how he caught that fish and, and the whole backstory and uh, the whole excitement of catching a, a personal best and w what I've heard is one of the biggest fish ever weighed in a bass tournament. So 1547, won him a whole bunch of money. So uh, that's our experience. We had a great time. I really enjoyed fishing with Grady. I hate that I didn't get more of his fish on video, but I didn't, so that just happens sometimes. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more now about the Spark deal. So here's what they've done for us. They have said that they're going to create this affiliate program. You can go to Spark Fishing and join it. Anybody can join it. And by joining it, you're eligible to win any of the Bass Champs money. You're eligible to win any of the Share Lunker money. You're eligible to win any of any or all of the nine Big Bass Lake tournaments we've got. So we've got biggest fish weighed by a Spark customer or somebody in the affiliate program in these nine lakes who also submits it to Sherlocker, so it's got to be at least an eight pounder and gets it approved, is going to win whatever money you win for that, the 250, 500, or 1,000 based on the size of the fish. And at the end of the year, the biggest fish in each of those lakes wins another 2,000 bucks. And you will qualify for the weekly 250 drawings here on Kinsmith Fishing. And we talked about how to price this. It's going to be 75 bucks to join it. And we, we set it at that price. We needed to be a little bit fair to Spark to help them recover 
because you know again they're they're not doing this to make a ton of money but they don't want to make it five dollars and just lessen what the guys who've actually signed up for spark have done but you think about it only one guy's got to sign up for a team to win so it's 3750 a partner now I would suggest both of you sign up so you can qualify for the big bass money because think about it most of us that fish very much are going to catch an eight pounder this year it's just going to happen if you do it it's an easy 250 bucks to get your, all your money back from entering it to share lunker getting it approved and submit it to spark for spark money so I think it's a great deal again you can do it even if you live in Indiana and you're gonna come down to fish fork for a work weekend you can enter it and you'd be eligible to win the two thousand bucks for big fish at spark and the two fifty five hundred or a thousand if you uh, if you submit a fish to share locker and get it approved so I I want to say thank you to the spark folks they've been awesome with this uh, you know we set out to make it prize money that everybody could win or as many people as possible could win and they've been really really open to letting us do that so uh, we now have you can be a spark customer or you can do the affiliate program either one doesn't matter uh, you can win the spark money so there you go again it's at sparkfishing.com uh, that's what the screen looks like when you pull it up so you can see where to enter and uh, it's simple it will take you a couple minutes so if you have any questions about that you guys know how to reach me kinsmanfishing at outlook.com i got several more videos coming up for you guys. Now, if I disappear for a few days, bear with me. Uh, we may be having a baby any old time now. So, oh, we got to do the spark drawing. Let's do the spark drawing real quick. Okay, sorry about that. Spark drawing. So, we got a whole bunch of names in here. A whole bunch of names. This is everybody that signed up for spark, and then everybody else that's just gone to spark fishing and has signed up for the weekly drawing. So, uh, I got names from all over the country. I'd kind of love for somebody outside of Texas to win it, but we'll see who wins here. So this week's $250. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom, and I'm going to pull that ticket right there. This week's winner is, there you go, perfect. Corey, man, I may have wrote your name down wrong. Massel, M-A-A-S-S-E-L, from Ohio. I can't read my own handwriting. I want to say it says Defiance, Ohio. I'll check the, I've got them on a spreadsheet and I'll check it. But Corey, congratulations. Uh, a non-Texas resident won our spark drawing this week. That's really exciting. I'll shoot you a message to make sure you know you won so you don't throw an envelope from Spark Energy away because you'd be like, who in the world Spark Energy? It's going to have a gift card in it. So there you go, Corey. I'm really happy for you that you won this. And I appreciate you guys tuning in, and we will be back with uh, more videos later this week. i got some pretty interesting stuff. I've gone down a couple of rabbit holes. You guys know I like technical stuff, so I've gone down a couple of rabbit holes. I'm really excited. i got something coming from the folks at Mercury. It's going to be a couple of weeks out that I'm fascinated by, and I know from y'all's response to some other stuff I've done, you guys have a ton of questions as well about uh, and then I've got some stuff coming on the Garmin Live Scope, some technical stuff I think you'll enjoy as well. And we've got a couple of boat reviews left to finish up as well. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We will see you again here just in a couple of days.